Hey, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Christy, Matt, Alonzo. Uh, new documentary in theaters about Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison. Uh, it's called Toni Morrison, The Pieces I Am. Anybody want to take it? a crack at no, recap? Go ahead. I will. Um, Nobel and Pulitzer <laughs> yes. Prize winner Toni Morrison, 88 years old, and... Uh, She's just a goddess. She's brilliant. <laughs> and Timothy Greenfield Sanders knows that. And everybody involved with this movie knows that. This is a very affectionate look at her, at her work, at her as a mom, at her as a trailblazer for female writers, for African-American writers, for all of the above. Um, it's a lot of interviews with her. Yes. And she's really sharp and really funny and just ageless. I mean, she's 88. Yeah. But it seems just... Totally, not just lucid, but like vibrant and like snappy and funny yeah. and uh, and and she's great. So it's like everyone from Oprah to her first editor at Knopf to Angela, Angela Davis. Davis. Angela, thank you, Angela Davis. Right, Walter <laughs> Mosley, Fran Leibowitz. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like an all star cast here of people who have worked with her or who are friends with her. Um, Oprah has a really funny story about how she tracking her down. how she tracked Toni Morrison down when she read Beloved and like had to talk to Toni Morrison about Beloved. Um, I have to admit, I don't think I've ever read. I know it's so embarrassing a single Toni Morrison well, book. No, uh, I want to fix it all. I, now. I envy you the opportunity of enjoying them for the first time. Yes, uh, I've seen. I haven't read one in a while. Like uh, I, I had this phase where I remember plowing through like. Um, you know, the early stuff like Bluest Eye, Sula, Song of Solomon, Tar Baby, Jazz. I have to admit, I've never finished Beloved okay. because it is this sort of magical realist ghost story and I, I could never quite just nail down, wait, what's happening? Where am I? When am I? So I've tried twice, but this movie inspired me to go back and take another shot at it because mm -hmm. obviously it is, you know, considered a great book. I've never seen the movie either, which... I've seen the movie. Dave have you seen the movie? Dave defends... Oh, People didn't, people didn't like the movie. The Jonathan Demme directed Beloved yeah. and Oprah It's funny, and this documentary, they very pointedly talk about the fact that the movie exists, but they don't talk about the fact that it flopped. Yeah, you see a scene here or there of, of, of Oprah. In and it. Danny Glover, yeah. But that is it. Uh, yeah, I haven't read any of her stuff because uh, it's not in the sci-fi fantasy section of the bookstore. <laughs> so. have, sounds... How much, Octavia, have you read any Octavia Butler? Yes. Okay, good then. Yes. It does you sound like... I'm not a total heathen. <laughs> Come on. Just mostly. Yeah, it sounds though but like... her stuff is in the right spot. So. Fair enough. Beloved does sound like it has some like kind of sci-fi yeah, you know, fantasy I need to pick it elements yeah. to oh, it. Oh, ghost so story. I'm in. You, yeah. can, you can see it. Uh, this is yeah. This is a really. I mean, the the first thing you see on screen is the American Masters logo, mm -hmm. and so you kind of know what you're in for. This is that sort of like PBS portrait of the great artist thing, but because it's about somebody who's alive and somebody who is as as you say as vibrant and fascinating as Toni Morrison still is, I think that injects a lot of life into this. Um, if anything, this is one of those rare films that I wish were like another hour <laughs> because it's a solid two hours. Yeah, it is. no, no, it's like it's, like, it's only about like an hour thirty-five, hour forty. No, yeah, it is two. No, no, no. Yes, I watched it, it this morning. I it's, watched it yesterday. It's, it's, almost, like, it's, it's almost two hours. It's two hours. I thought it was like long. ninety-five minutes. Long. Okay, well, anyway, you it, missed part of it. No, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> Whatever, it should be longer because like they don't really talk about any of the books after Beloved, so they don't really go into like you know Paradise and you know these other films uh, but, and even some of the ones before. A little bit like like well, neither jazz or trauma. They really not, get into as deeply as they do the other ones. And sorry, just let me finish this. Um, I, I just I would have liked to have known more about everything, like about her sons. Like she talks about the difficulty of raising you know two children as a single mom while being a book editor and an author and a professor and all that stuff. And yes, but like you know more about like who are they now and how do they turn out? And what do they have to say about her? Like. I would have liked to have known more about like, does she have a personal life? We, you know, after her husband leaves, we have no idea if there's any romantic involvement in her life. Um, you know, I, I do like what, what the, but that aside, what the movie does and does well, I think is contextualizes her in this really fascinating period of American culture and shows how much she was a driver of a lot of it. Uh, from, you know, putting together the black book, writing those early novels, kind of having to answer to these white critics who think that, that, that you know, her that, that, that it's a weakness of her work, that it's not universal enough because she's writing about black people and, like, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that itself I thought was really good. Well, mm -hmm. it's not that, she, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things, I mean, look, like, as, high, as hagiographies go, this one's pretty good. Sure. Right? Like, it's... 
But one of the things this movie does particularly well, and not all docs do this, is kind of contextualize why her work is so important. Sure. Right. And so when it when they talk about, it's less that I mean, yes, she's writing about ba- black people, but she's writing about black people to black people. She's not bothering to explain anything. Yeah, the gaze right, is right, mentioned a lot. Right. She mentions, you know, it's not the white male gaze. It's it's the point of view. G-A-Z-E. And she's right. It's right. And she's talking to you are a white male gaze. You know, just to be clear. Right. She's writing as if she assumes that someone is black and has gone through a similar experience and she's writing to primarily in her mind a black audience and I thought that was really fascinating and that's where she gets blowback from the critics early on right. is because they're like you know and the, and the comments are things like well she'd really widen her scope and widen her her you know who she's speaking to then she's really going to do something and it's and you kind of look back at that and that's like 72 I think yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah. and it's like, like oh my god we're not that long like, that's not that long <laughs> there's such condescension um, in that as well as in, in the interview she does the people who are supposed to be like the most esteemed interviewers of their time like Charlie Rose right. like Dick Cavett Bill Moyers yeah, yeah and they're asking her questions that she's just like you're asking the wrong right. question <laughs> <laughs> right yeah you can almost but, sense the like the, the inhales like Here's what we should be talking about, <laughs> right? The, you know, but it also the thing with that style of documentary where you've got the subject involved in doing interviews and it and it isn't a warts and all, and it does treat the ne- like at best it will kind of ignore the negative anything negative. Mm. You start to if you start reading between the lines, you start to suspect stuff. And I started to think like, does she not talk to her kids anymore? Like, did they not come along when she won the Nobel? Like, you see, she has this posse of, of female friends like Oprah and Maya Angelou and Fran right. Lebowitz. But like, do her kids go? I, I don't know, Good right? Because yeah. because in in leaving them out, is it um, you know is it because uh, if because the kids don't like the kids don't show up, they don't really talk. It's like, could they not? Did they either they didn't couldn't get them or. They didn't have anything good to say. And that's fine. It doesn't take away with who she is as an artist, but it's a little like you start, you know, you, I get a little suspicious, like, hey, wait a minute. How come they right? didn't talk How to her? How come they yeah, didn't no, talk I to her? Right? And again, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to cast aspersions as her. It's just, it's. It raises you know, the question. Raises the question and tells you, like, okay, this is about her art and her impact on the art. And it's, I don't even want to say it's necessarily sanitized. It's just like. It doesn't necessarily give you a portrait of the whole person. Not at all. I mean, the the closest it comes to anything even vaguely negative about her is toward the very, very end when Fran Lebowitz is talking about um, going with her to Stockholm for the Nobel Prize and talking about how Tony loves prizes. Tony loves presents. You know, <laughs> you, you go to someone's birthday party and they say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't bring me anything. I'm fine. Tony's like, you bring me a present. <laughs> So that's the only vague, like it's to- Tony loves clothes, Tony loves prizes. So that's the only thing that even resembles a slightest inclination of criticism about her character. And even that is sort of just humanizing, I yeah. think. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, but it's, you know, it's fascinating. And, it, and it's great to hear people like Mosley, talk, like, sure, yeah. you know, Walter Mosley and some of the other writers and Angela Davis and, and getting that perspective of people uh, as to how she changed writing and what how literature was kind of you know and it's just fascinating stories right and she's a good storyteller and yes. and the, and the director um does a good job of sticking to other people that are also good storytellers right like they're they're and so you do get this glimpse of like you know it, it keeps things moving along as much as the movie is primarily you know, just a bunch of talking heads and, and, uh, it, it's a very good commercial for the work. Like yeah, by the, when this is over, yeah. you're like, Oh, I got to read right. Song of yeah, Solomon exactly. or read also, it again. You know? Yeah. Also the interviews are all lighted really beautifully. I mean, Timothy Greenfield Sanders has done a lot of movies like this. He did like all the, the blacklist movies yeah, and the gay and list. The gay and, list the, and, and, and before that he was a the photographer. Outlist, the outlist, the outlist is outlist, what yeah. it's called. Right. I'm going to gay trans, explain, but he did the trans movie. list yes. also. And there's a Latino list. So yeah. he has, a, and, and as Lonzo points out, he's a photographer. Her. Right. It's um it's uh wow. Sorry. I have, have had really to do it. Sorry. blown off of what I was gonna say. Sorry. No, but it just it just shows like it's there is great care taken. We're saying like, oh, it's talking heads, but you know, it it's is crafted little, nicely. Right. There's a weird it's nice talking heads. Th- there's a thing they do that I don't know how I feel about it, but like to make it feel less talking headsy, it'll be like one person is sharing this idea with you, and then the camera will come in slower while they're talking about a thing, and then they'll be talking some more, and then it'll come back out again and they're still completing the thought. And it's kind of like why was what happened? Like, who needed that 
that weird cut in the middle of a thing. But I guess it's just a way to kind of keep it from the shots right. being too static. You Break know. it up somehow. But yeah. this I don't, is I don't totally know if I like it or hate it. It's just sort of like right. odd. But it's totally worth seeing. Oh, for it sure. It is. It's yes. very informative. It is. And it, it is long, but it moves well. So um, I am saying, what did I say? 7.7. 7. Uh, I said 7.5. Yep, you sure did. 7.5. What did I say? 7.5. Our number is 7.6. It's at 96% on the tomato meter. I believe it is just opening, what, is it just New York and LA this week? Anyway, uh, limited. Yeah. It'll be out in the world eventually. And, you know, eventually it will be on American Masters. It'll be on television. So, you know. Oh, you're right. Two hours. Huh. Maybe it just breezed by for wow. you. Wow, okay. It just breezed Don't by. Don't watch movies on Fast Forward. Here. <laughs> I swear to you. Like, anyway. Why do they all sound like chipmunks? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised at how high everybody's voices were. That was they were also manic. Were they exactly. Going, what like, was that about? I didn't realize all of these writers and activists were doing coke all the time. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. Follow us at Be Fast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And oh, won't you go check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash linoleum knife? It's where we no, do our TV. Not linoleum knife. Oh my god, sorry, that's my other show. Won't you go check out our Patreon page at <laughs> patreon.com slash be fast all day where we talk about uh, TV recaps and uh, movie news and trailers and uh, we'll be reviewing classics soon. It's all very exciting. I mean, to be cool, linoleum, to be clear, Linoleum Knife is cool. Yes, and, you and we also have a Patreon as but well. But it's, it's the one I'm more used to talking about. It's right, all. Alonso has not paid us for that endorsement. It's all yet, new so. and exciting territory. So, uh, yes, patreon.com slash be fast all day. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Catch hang on, hang on. Don't, don't turn it off yet. Hello. I got a thing to tease. Oh. On yeah. Monday, yes. Alonzo, yes. our interview with Jeff McHale Yay. is coming out on a la carte. This is the director of an upcoming documentary about showgirls called. You don't know me, N O M I. Right, the it premiered best title ever. Premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Mm -hmm. It's going to be playing this coming week at Frameline in San Francisco and uh, here in Los Angeles at Outfest in late July. Yes, yeah, so come look look for that on Monday, Jeff McHale. You don't know me. Excellent. All right. Well, until next time. Bye. Bye.